So you have a lot of debt and a low income. Let's talk about it. I don't know about you, but if you listen to those debt free screams on Dave Ramsey, either you listen to it or you watch it on YouTube, it seems like everyone getting out of debt has a huge income. <laughs> like they're doctors or, you know, they have great careers. Like they're making, you know, 70, 80 as a household, making over six figures. And it leads to, first off, that's great for them because I know it's still, they still worked hard, but it makes it seem like in order to get out of debt, you have to make a lot of money. And that's not true. If you don't make six figures as a household, if you, let's say, make less than, you know, 80, 70, 60, 50, if you make less than that as a household a year, it's still possible for you. Don't, don't count yourself out. And that's what this video is about. Now I'm saying all this not as someone who has done it yet, <laughs> but so I'm, it's, it's, I don't want it to come across as, you know, the blind leading the blind and I'm just telling you something. This is, I'm sharing something based on what I've seen other people do. And as I guess you can say, as a hungry person telling another hungry person where to find food, like this is something to help someone who's still in that position. So first off, the term for that in the Dave Ramsey debt-free community world is tiny shovel. And if you haven't heard that, what it means is that your debt is the whole, you know, it's the negative, you know, you're in the red, you know, that's, you, you owe that amount of money. And the shovel is what you need to kind of, you know, put the dirt back in to try to fix it up, to fix the hole. And if you have a tiny shovel or a small shovel, that means you have a small income to do that with. If you have a huge shovel, that means you have a huge income to work with. Let's say you make over 100K a year and you owe 80K. It's not a problem. I mean, it still takes some discipline and work, but it's not as difficult as someone making 45K a year and they have over $100,000 in debt. That's us. <laughs> so we are Team Tiny Shovel. And I want to talk to those other Team Tiny Shovelers. You know, we're kind of the invisible people, the not the unspoken, the people who are wanting to do it, wanting to get out of debt, but they don't see people like them or in their situation doing it. So that's kind of where this channel kind of came from. That's what I want to talk about like right now. Like how do you get out of debt when you have a low income? I want to talk about three things. Number one, first and foremost, you have to get this. You have to make more money. <laughs> <laughs> like that's simple and it's that simple and it's something that Dave has said you know I I've, I watch a lot of Dave I, I admit I raise my hand I, yes I watch a lot of Dave and I specifically look for people like me who make a low income and the ones that do they or Dave Ramsey's advice and the other personalities advice is to you have to make more money in order to make more money, you have to get creative. Like depending on your, your home situation, household, if you have children and there's two of you, you have to figure out some type of way. Like an example for us, like I did a grocery delivery and there's so much, you know, Dave talks about delivering pizzas. You know, there are flexible jobs out there. You know, it's 2020, about to be 2021. We have so much, you know, at our fingertips. And so grocery delivery, that's something that you can do even if you just had a child. Like at the time I was just having a child, I was nursing, you know, like nursing as in feeding that child. So, you know, I had a very limited time because it, I, I had to be available for the child. So I was still able to do some grocery delivery and make some extra money. I think that it's important to know that time is your most valuable asset when it comes to making more money. You have to find a way to, it's not necessarily, I gotta run out and get another job after, you know, do something traditional. You can think out the box, especially depending on your family dynamic. And I think that for us, the biggest thing has been to go into sales of some kind of sales. It sounds odd going to sales, going to business. That's the way we are trying to make more money. Um, now, Warren, you know, my husband, he did the grocery delivery. He did working extra job. He worked in a grocery store. Like the thing with those is that you know, you're on somebody else's time. 
and they're getting a cut of what you make. Like, that's the biggest thing. You know, I did a waitress. Like, I, I worked as a server. And, you know, working for tips, that's good, too. Like, that's another way to, you know, make more money. Because you're not stuck at, let's say, you know, what is it, seven twenty five? at least for me at the time, it was seven twenty five an hour as minimum wage. You're not stuck at that. You have the potential to make so much more from tips. So working in jobs that have tips, that's one way you can make more money. Another is, you know, those flexible kind of gig economy jobs of, you know, working grocery delivery. Um, uh, another is to, um, like I mentioned, just about um, sales, like trying to sell something. And like I said, it's 2020, there's so much to do. And I may talk about it some more, but eBay, you know, selling things that way and, you know, you don't need child care for that. <laughs> like you literally can, you know, do it, you know, while you're maybe your um, husband is home with the kids, you can go out, you know, either go garage sailing or sourcing or doing something or just selling things you already have at your home, take the kids to the, to the post office with you and mail it off. Like it's, and you're making money Well, you know, still caring for her home. Like if you're a stay at home parent, uh, or if you just, you know, have very limited means for child care. Well, um, I know of some people who go into selling insurance or become a real estate agent, like just something to where the, the, the thing with sales and business is that you have an uncapped earning potential. You can make as much money as you want, literally, like, and it sounds kind of get rich quick, but you look at people who are wealthy and which, you know, the Warren Buffetts of the world, you know, and they, they're not working for someone. You know, and I had to kind of step back and consider that. Okay, what are these people doing? They're finding a way to sell something. They're finding a way to make the most of their time. So that's that's thing one. Like that's out of three. I only have three that she, that we have to do in order to make more money, or in order to get out of debt. The thing one is that we have to make more money somehow. We have to get creative, think out the box. Um, and every little bit helps. The trick is to make more with less time. So number two, we have to focus. Like we have to be consistent. <laughs> we have to stick to the plan. And, and that's, uh, that's kind of our downfall too. It's doing the same thing over and over and over again. It's being disciplined enough. It's like when you work out, you know, you're, you're not going to lose weight. We know that from experience. <laughs> you're not going to lose a lot of weight that first week, that first month. You know, you're not going to get to your goals, you know, that quickly, but you have to be consistent. You have to keep at it, even if you don't see results. And the thing about getting out of debt, it's going to, especially if you have a low income, it's going to take a while. <laughs> it's going to take longer than 18 months like these other people. And, you know, it, this isn't, you know, sipping the hater aid on those other people, <laughs> but, you know, people with the 100K, you know, income. It's knowing and being realistic, okay, I, I have to settle in, you know, I, I have to, you know, put my game face on for, for a while. It may take years. I know that for us, it's going to take a couple years and it's taken longer because we didn't focus. So I want to encourage you, if you're on a low income and you're trying to get out of debt, make sure you know that you have to focus and keep doing the same thing. Keep working hard. Keep throwing that money at the debt. Keep attacking it. Put, keep keep at it. Um, is that a Tesla? Wait a minute. Is someone driving? Okay. It looks like somebody, I have to look at that later. It looks like someone who's rode by in a Tesla, but okay. So keep at it. That's, that's, that's number two. And then number three is you have to de decrease your expenses. It's very simple. Like once you, once you break it down, aside from making more money, like, like that's the big thing that that's where it makes a lot of difference. Um, but it's very simple of spending less than you are bringing in. Like it's, it's very simple. And the even lower amount that you can get, like the, the more you can decrease your expenses, the better it'll be because you'll be making more money. So that's where the whole idea of frugality comes in and being frugal of, you know, reusing your little plastic baggies. <laughs> like now, like, you know, there are different degrees of it, but you have to find a way to say, you know what? I'm not buying the money bread. I'm not buying nature owned bread. I'm buying, you know, the generic store bought brand bread <laughs> so that my money goes a little further. And it may seem simple, 
or it may seem like too like oversimplified like you know what is that going to do i want my bunny bread but the thing about it or you know whatever bread you like the thing about it is is that it adds up you know, you'd be surprised or you're buying you know the 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 honey nut cheerios and aprons you know mm. or you know you one thing for us is we make our own pancake mix like we don't because you just find ways to be frugal you find ways to cut back and all of that adds up over time it's a strategy and i just want to challenge you if you are team tiny shovel that you consider these things that you consider okay can i somehow decrease my expenses can i somehow increase my income can i make more money somehow and in what ways am I not focused? Am I not all over the place? If I'm all over the place or, you know, one month I'm sticking to the budget and the other month, you know, I'm overdrafting. Like, what are some ways where I can really laser in? Can I do two months of a row of budgeting and sticking with it, sticking with my food budget? Or, you know, just try it. Just do it for a little bit and just see, see the results. Um, and then I just have a bonus for you. Um, because this is very important too. It's, it's the mindset. Like, I think some people dismiss it. I know I have. You need to know that you're not alone. That you're not a loser. That you're not um, somehow a, a moral failure because you're in debt. <laughs> Especially, let's say, you know, like, you know, for us, you know, we're in our mid 30s and, you know, we're living in a 1200 square foot apartment with two children. And, you know, we're still trying to get out of debt five years later <laughs> like it sounds it can be discouraging looking at it that way um and we don't live in a fairy tale we we're we're very you know we're realistic and we understand you know the situation but that we're in but we can't stay there like we cannot we cannot dwell in that we cannot just be all consumed we have to find a way how do we get out of it and how dave talks about you know gazelle intense you know working like your hair's on fire like that's what we have to focus on and that's what it takes to get out of debt on a low income you have to be laser focused and zeroed in on that you don't have time like listen to me carefully you don't have time to focus and think about how bad your situation is you don't have time for that you really don't you have to focus on how to get out of it and how to make more money how to decrease your expenses and be consistent in what you're doing so my bonus tip is to still enjoy your life it sounds um, counterintuitive when you're trying to save money and trying to lower your expenses. How can you enjoy your life? There are ways. You, you'll find free ways to do that. You'll find ways to just, you know, watch your kids eating dinner and say, you know, thank you, God, that they can eat today or that they, you know, are still healthy or that, you know, it's 30 degrees outside and we're still in a, you know, insulated, warm home. You know, just... Find opportunities to be grateful. Find opportunities to laugh, to enjoy your life. Because think about this. Let's say you're getting out of debt and you, you know, just are slogging through it. And, you know, you just hate that time. Let's say it takes you two years to get out of debt and you just hate every second of it. <laughs> but somehow you're able to do it. God forbid something happens and you're not even able to, and you're not able to enjoy that debt-free life that you worked so hard to try to get to not saying that would happen or could happen or maybe the likelihood of that happening is zero but we just don't know and that's the thing about life is that once it's gone especially once certain stages of life are gone they're gone so don't wait until you're debt free to live your life is what i want to say don't wait till you're debt free to enjoy your life somehow um find joy in the day um you may be familiar with the serenity prayer and some people aren't familiar with the other part of it like there, you know, other parts of it. And one is, um, or the other part that I really like is living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, and then accepting pathway, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. But find a way to live one day at a time, enjoy one moment at a time while you're trying to get out of debt. It's able, you're, you're able to do that. Like, you know, when I talk about being laser focused and intentional, you know, you can still find ways to be grateful. I just want you to know that it's possible to find contentment while pursuing more. And 
it does take some intentionality to work that muscle, but once you get that, you get it. You'll even notice that you're able to accomplish more when you are more content, when you're, you know, happier with who you are and where you're at. It's a strange thing, it really is, but but when you're, you know, down in the dumps, it, it's hard to, you know, get going and to get motivated. And I see all this from experience. So I just wanted to share that with you all. If you are Team Tiny Shovel, please let me know, please. <laughs> like, I, I know that we're not in, you know, we're, we're, you know, my husband and I, I know that we're not in this alone, but it is so encouraging to hear from other people who are fighting the good fight. It's just get so good to know that there are other people doing the same thing. It's encouraging. So if you don't want to know that, if you don't want to let me know, that's okay too, but know that um, we're there with you and we're cheering you on too.